This is Mari Robeson of Love Lulu Creative, a podcast that supports and celebrates artists and creative entrepreneurs. This is episode number 43, and I'm thrilled to have on today's show a very good friend of mine, Marilyn Russell. Marilyn is one of the most talented interior designers that I have ever met, and she's also one of the nicest people I have ever met. So I'm really honored that she has taken some time off of her really busy schedule to have this really important conversation with me and with us. Uh, not only do we discuss all um, how wonderful her design career is and her journey and her awards and uh, how she mentors uh, young designers, but we also touch on the very important subject happening currently right now uh, regarding the Black Lives Matter movement and regarding our industry, our interior design industry, and how underrepresented uh, black designers are. It's a very important conversation and Marilyn offers some really wonderful advice and and just her opinion, it's, it's really helpful to hear. And I hope that, um, you know, change starts with a conversation and more conversations. And so hopefully we can get the ball rolling on this and make the design industry uh, as beautiful as it really should be and as inclusive as it really should be. So that said, if you are enjoying these episodes, please hit that subscribe button and share it with your creative friends. It really does help with this mission to support the arts and uh, stay tuned for a really interesting conversation with the incredibly talented and so lovely, such a lovely soul, my dear friend, Marilyn Russell. Hi, Marilyn. I am so happy and excited to have you on the show today to talk with you about your creative journey and um, lots of things. We have a lot of things to talk about today. We do. I'm so excited. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we've been friends for uh, quite a bit of time on, on social media, so it was really lovely mm -hmm. to get to finally hear your voice in person. I appreciate this very much. Um, so anyway, you are a fabulous interior designer, and I'm also excited Thank to talk you. about that because I've been kind of on a hiatus for a while, so you're going to have to catch me up to speed on what's going on in the world out there of design. Um, but I want to go all yes, the way back. Yes. I would like to go all the way back to where you are from. So let's start all the way back at the beginning of your fabulous life. <laughs> My fabulous life. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I was born in Jamaica mm. and um, came to the U.S., to Boston, actually, uh, when I was 13 um, with my mom and her brother. And um, I basically grew up there, went to grade school there, um, high school, a little bit of college. And then in about 2002, um, I moved to Orlando. Um, what but, made you uh, move to was, Orlando? I needed to get back to the warmer weather. Oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm from Jamaica. I'm like... I can't stay in Boston, right. you know. <laughs> what well, uh, are you in? Still in Florida right now? You're, you're. Whereabouts in Florida are you right now? I am. I'm in Orlando. Okay. Um, and um, right, I'm in Napoca actually, which is right outside of Orlando. It's not not too far. Okay. It's almost like the suburbs of Orlando. Poor Florida and um, California. We're both like. In a mess right now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> can't, you can't, you can't keep the Flor Floridians inside. <laughs> I guess, or the Californians. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Too close to the water, I guess. I don't know. Oh, man. Um, um, okay, so you went, so you moved down to Florida. Did you go to college there or? Um, not at you? first. So when I moved out of Boston, um, I didn't even, it wasn't even an interior design, interior designer. I didn't even think about interior design, but um, I started out in insurance. So I was a claims adjuster. Oh, okay. And um, I managed um, 
trucking claims, construction defect claims. And, you know, it was a great, it's a very lucrative career. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I brought that with me to Orlando, kept that, doing that for a while. Um, But eventually I got really burnt out. Um, It was, it's a lot of paper pushing, I think. Uh, from my perspective and um and then you know but i didn't immediately leave that job i i just thought about i need to do something i have to do something what else am i good at and i'd always love to just design my space you know and Mm -hmm. um put things together and you know i was i was i thought i was good at it i loved doing it and um, I was like, you know what? I, I looked for a design school, interior design school in Orlando, um, because I just needed to do something. Mm-hmm. And um, I found one. And one Saturday, I told my husband, I was like, hey, I'm gonna, I'll be right back. I'm just going to run an errand. So I went to the school. I went over to the school, took a tour, and I signed up. <laughs> I signed up. He's like, I thought you were going to go get some milk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I came back home, and I'm like, guess what? I'm going back to school. <laughs> he was like, okay. Oh, was he supportive of that? Oh, my gosh, very. Oh, good. He was very supportive. And, um, yeah, so I, you know, I signed up. I, I still had my job as a, as a claims adjuster, and I went part time at night um, for probably about a year. And um, I did that. It was a three year accelerated program, um, and um, eventually I left my claims adjuster job and I went to school full time. Nice. And now here I am. So, so you went to school full time there in Orlando. Mm-hmm, yes. Oh, okay. And you, and so you, you got a degree in design. I, I take it. Absolutely. Yes. The bachelor's degree. Okay. That's. Um, cool. mm-hmm. So, yeah. what was your first um, design job after school? Where did you go from there? Well, that is an interesting story because. At the time that I started school and finished, the market was going bad. Mm. Um, the housing market crashed. Oh. <laughs> and yeah. um, there were no jobs. Mm. And so friends, a bunch of friends, we got together. We were, you know, graduating around the same time. Um we got together and opened a design firm. And I think you remember it was called Design Magnifique. Uh-huh. I do. I remember that. And we just we just said, hey, <laughs> you know, let's just try this and see what happens. Well, it seemed to work out pretty well for you. I think so. At yeah, least for a little you while. Did, you yeah. went on and you did, you got some nice awards from that when you were working I with did. them, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me about, was that the ASID award or was, I, I saw that you had a couple of awards to the Aurora award also. Yes, it was ASID. It was a member and every year they have, um, competition. And so we submitted, you know, um, a bunch of, of uh, we mostly did residential because in the state of Florida, you need to be a licensed interior designer in order to practice commercial. Mm. So all we did was um, residential um, renovation, you know, um, interior design, and we submitted and yeah, and we won. And we won three times. Yay. It was great. Yay. I yeah. love it. Your style is very, um, it's very warm. It's very contemporary, but you you love the the warm tones, which so do I. I, I, I think do. You you use the color orange the best I've ever seen anybody use it. It's my school. favorite color. Oh well, that would explain yeah. it. <laughs> 
And you know, it's interesting, orange is the color of creativity. So that's, that's funny that it's not funny at it all. It is, isn't it? Makes it? Yeah. sense. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love it. And I notice it because I remember when I was really young, this is a little tangent, sorry. My mom let me pick out the wallpaper and I picked um, at my bedroom and it was orange butterflies. I, don't, I loved that wallpaper. Like I stared at it obviously all the time. Isn't so, it a here. fun color? Yes. It makes me, it's a happy color. I love it. So it is, it yeah. really is. You know, <laughs> some people like either hate it or love it. <laughs> um, I, I love, well, I love all color, but I really love your style and it's not a style that I feel like I could pull off. I I'm definitely kind of a different oh, type of you. designer. So I think you do it very well. And it's, it's a style that you have to really understand design to do it correctly you know so thank you i appreciate that explains that. all those awards <laughs> <laughs> true <laughs> yeah so um okay so you had design man man nifi for uh how long did you have that before you decided to do something different so we had that for five years um and and then it came, I did I, I don't really remember exactly how I ended up in my next job, but I'm about to talk about, but um, I remember it was a vendor um, who visited me and um, she was telling me about a, a company that was looking for an interior designer. And she, you know, she said they do multifamily and I really didn't know what that was. It's like, oh, okay. So <laughs> I said, all right, let me, you know, I, I'm just going to go have a conversation. You can't hurt. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, so I did my research on the company and on the type of interior design, multifamily. And I went and had the interview and they offered me the job on the spot. Wow. And so I said, oh, okay. Now what do I do? <laughs> do oh. I, you know, I, and I told them, I said, you know, I do have a company. Um, it's mostly residential, you know, and they, you know, they said, well, you can continue, continue to um, work on your jobs on the side if you'd like. Uh, but, you know, would really love to have you on board. And then I had to make a decision, you know, because I knew that I started the company right out of school with just my school experience, but I didn't really have the interior design experience from a company perspective. Mm, and helpful. I wanted to grow. And so I said, this is an opportunity for me to improve upon my skills from a company perspective because I know that I needed to learn other things besides what I kind of, you know, taught myself or learn from networking with other interior designers. And that was my opportunity, you know, to, to grow. So I, I accepted the job. You know, and that's how that that's happened. Good advice to um, even the young people listening to this because it is helpful to learn under a, a wing of a company or somebody who, uh, an architecture firm or you know someone who can kind of mentor you along the way as well. That's that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. that's, that's great that you saw it that way. I like that. Yeah, I'm like I, I don't know everything, and I've made so many mistakes along the way, but there's so much more to interior design than you know than what you learn in school oh yeah and every job has its own challenges every job is different of course <laughs> absolutely it, it's absolutely never, <laughs> you, I, I did it for so long and i built my own houses and i still would get on job and i'm like for real huh <laughs> I have to figure that one out now. <laughs> and I think that I like that part of it was the challenges of it, you know, and solve, problem solving aspect of it. I enjoyed in doing it. Okay, so oh, you yeah. with this company. How Absolutely. long were you with this company? And 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 how did that experience go for you? 
Um, so I was with the company about four and a half years. Um, and it was a really great experience. I learned so much. Um, and I made so many, so many mistakes along the way. Um, I won awards. Um, I've mentored design assistants and interns and now they're either, you know, one one is a designer now and another one is a, a came back to the company and she's a design assistant. Um, but those are really valuable years um, mm -hmm. and experiences. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't, I would never change that. It was mm -hmm. really, I, and I don't regret the decision that I made to leave my company and go to a firm. Mm -hmm. Because now I know that I prefer commercial um, interior design versus residential mm. design. I do too. <laughs> I, I guess I know. I mean, I could tell you why. Why? Why is that? I want to ask you why you prefer it. Why do you prefer that over over residential? I prefer it because it's a lot more decisions. Um, you're not, and to me, how I see commercial is that you don't have just one client, you have the pain client, but then you also have the client that is going to use the space. So to me, that is a challenge in making sure that you deliver for both parties mm -hmm. does that make sense oh yeah absolutely that's i'm very much so why i i prefer doing commercial too i think um i, I enjoy residential too but it's such a marriage when you're in a, a residential home build with with a couple you know and and it, the husband doesn't like what the wife likes it becomes a lot of therapy <laughs> Mm -hmm. and and yes that yes indeed yeah you know just a lot of like kind of tiptoeing around personalities just to deliver the best and product for them so that is true i feel like there's a little more yes i do them in commercial design from my experience yes i do like that mm -hmm. and the budgets are bigger too <laughs> oh yeah yeah and it's just uh, it's a little bit more of a consistent thing anyway so yeah i digress on that okay so you worked for that for a while <laughs> but you're not with them anymore right you're doing something different no i still am now uh no oh, i left them i started with another commercial firm um but they're a little bit bigger and the reason why i now i am now with this new firm is that i want to get licensed in the state of Florida. And I also wanted to, you know, grow and do other things. And now with the type of work that I'm doing, which is more interior architecture, where mm -hmm. I have to research codes and, um, uh, you know, make sure that the we have the the correct like fire rated wall or mm -hmm. or okay. the correct acoustical um you know it's it's a, it's more technical mm. and i wanted to dive into that aspect of being an interior designer because it's not all the pretty stuff right and oh, right. i want to be a well-rounded interior designer and so now I'm learning the other side of it. Nice. So is this an architecture firm that you're working with? Or is it, it is. Design it is an architecture firm. Mm -hmm. Nice. And you've been with them for just how long have you been working with them? Since February. Oh, so new so job. Five months. Yeah. Oh, very new. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here's a job and, and now the world's going to shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Get that out. Here's your new job, and you can't go to it anymore. No, I actually. I know. <laughs> but construction's so been funny. Going, you know, 
uh, has it affected you very much, the whole COVID thing? Job wise? No, actually. Job wise, no. I've been uh, really busy. We have a steady pace of work. Um, they are not hiring at the moment, um, but you know, uh, it's still, they haven't laid anyone off either. So it's, they, we're, it's, it's good. Yeah. For me, thank God. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll get through this. So um, that's a very diverse background and it's, it's really great that you've kind of done everything from owning your own business to doing interior design, now learning more about commercial design. So it doesn't, it, it follows suit that you like the idea of being a mentor and a teacher. And mm -hmm. I, I, I do probably see more of that in your future, perhaps question mark. Ah, you, you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I did want to touch on the whole current events of what's going on in the world right now. Not only with the whole COVID thing that we have to deal with, but with the whole Black Lives Matter movement. And um, I think it would be really helpful to hear from you about the design industry and um, just your viewpoint of if you feel that the design industry has done yeah. a good Bob, um, at being inclusive to um, Black members of this community? I would say no. And I'm, I am saying no. Um, you know, at the last firm that I was and the firm that I'm at now, there's not a lot of people of color. Um, there's probably you know, the amount of, of, of black people I can count on one hand. And that's not good. Mm -mm. It's not I don't, good. I mean, and it's not just the firms that I've been at. It's just across the board mm -hmm. for this whole entire interior design and architectural industry. Mm -hmm. um, it's really sad that we don't see more inclusivity of, 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 of people of color. Um, I don't know why that is, but it's something that can be changed and it should be changed. I agree. Well, I think you're changing it just by being, representing that. And so a younger student can look and go, oh, there's Marilyn. She's a woman of color she's a kick-ass designer <laughs> i can do that too you know <laughs> I think some right? role models more maybe some more faces of role models that would be helpful but um because mm -hmm. i wonder if you even think that that's an option like if i mean did you feel like that was when you were in college well you went there specifically because you thought you wanted to do interior design you had a spark of interest for that who who inspired you like made you think, oh, I, I want to do that. Was there any, do you have any kind of a, a role model or um, a designer that was an influencer to you? Uh, no, actually. Um, you know, I used to watch HGTV, of, you know, I didn't see a representation of myself, mm -hmm. but I just knew I liked it. Um, my mom was the only person that really pushed me to do it because she said that, you know, she used to tell me you're so good at it and you absolutely love it. You just, just develop it. Mm. And, you know, so when I went to school or when I was, you know, interested to join the industry, I didn't really think about, do I see people that look like me? I said to myself, I'm going to change it somehow you know um yeah. i don't know how but i need to pierce this industry because there's no one that looks like me and i and and i and and why is that mm -hmm. right i mean i do see uh, the representation in like design bloggers and decorators but not in the the design industry i don't see it either no Hardly. And we're out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's not good. <laughs> so, um, no. Wow. Um, no, I would... 
I want to ask you, you know, other than I, if you have ideas on how that can be changed, um, that part of me feels like that's not your job. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's more my job as a, a white designer to be more inclusive of other people, you know, who want to be in this industry. Um, I think that's more true. Active about, um, be more active about it. But you know what, too? I think it goes both ways. And, you know, from your perspective, yes, you can, you know, start to look or, you know, reach out and make sure that um, we're a part of the design industry. And also, I think that because we're not represented so much, I think students who may think of going into the design industry don't see themselves represented. And so they probably, it's not, it doesn't leave a good taste in their mouth. And so mm -hmm. they think that they, they, you know, that, that they can't do it somehow, mm -hmm. you know? And so, you know, from my perspective, I, I think more mentorship would help definitely, you know, um, from middle school, maybe high school, you know, career events, you know, just to show them and, you know, show up and, you know, and say, yeah, yes, we do exist. You mm -hmm. know, you do have a place here in the design industry, you know, and making them feel that they can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's a good thing. I agree with you on that. I think a lot of it too is just awareness. I mean, just because you don't see it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't exist. Like you said, that you said we are out there. Yeah. We're just not seeing We us. are. And that's. Um, no, not, not until now. <laughs> yeah. Now, now we Our see, voices yeah, we are loud it. now. Fabulous. <laughs> I'm loving every minute of it, you know. Um, yeah, I am. I, um, I, I think that's part of the complacency, um, is not to think, you know, oh, to look for that or to be inclusive of that. And that's part, um, that we can do better as a, as a, as a country. You know, I think we yes. have to look within ourselves and really do some deep self examination and reflection and, um, you know, we've all been raised this way where we can change these old limiting beliefs and embrace. Oh my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. Something new. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I like that a lot. I, I think that that's helpful, Marilyn, that you share that. Thank you for doing that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, how about, I mean, what would you say to the industry leaders of the whole, well, all this interior design. I mean, even ASID, you know, do you have something that you would want to, to share with them about this topic? Yes. Besides do better, <laughs> do better, <laughs> you know, better, do better. I mean, you know, like seriously, yeah, you need to, you need to look across your, of your, uh, your, um, platform there and, 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 you know, and see where you can make changes. You know, but it is, you know, they have to, they have to make a change, right, you know, reach out to the, the uh, community. Exactly. I mean, it comes from the top there, you know, and that's the part, the complacent mm -hmm. part. It's like, if you have that platform, um, use it, <laughs> you know, and use it, use it yeah. wisely and, and compassionately and with awareness, you know. Um, I think a lot of people think, oh, it's not, I'm not that way. I don't do that. But you are part of this. If you don't do something. You to, are. Yes. You're part of the problem. Right. Um, I hope we are entering a new age of awareness and a better time. You know what? I, I think so. I think so. I, I have a lot of hope. Um, and, you know, just because people's voices, people are, you know, starting to voice their 
opinion, I think, and people are listening, I'm very hopeful that it's going to slowly but surely change. Mm -hmm. um, it may not happen overnight. It won't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just something that we have to keep pushing for. I agree. You know, I and those at the top can certainly turn around and reach a hand back and help someone. There you go. Yeah, I I really feel like um, that's that and educating ourselves and and I you know we as a country need to educate ourselves to just because you feel in your daily life that you would never be this way or do that, but you have to look at the, the history of where we have come and why it's like this and how we need to do better within our just daily communications of how we speak and have awareness of of things that we say to each other even you know i mean everybody's going to come at it from their own personal perspective their upbringing and raising and stuff but then there's a point where you have to educate yourself and learn more about right. you know why this is still happening you know it's it's just <sighs> <laughs> No, seriously. <laughs> I know, right? Sometimes I, it's I, so exhausting. <laughs> it, no, it's just, it's, it's exhausting, but it's necessary. And it's like, it's, it's yeah. conversations, difficult conversations that need to be had for our expansion as a human race. I mean, we need to yes. understand each other and each other's backgrounds and where we're coming from to heal. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. I'm, <laughs> are you excited? I'm glad you're excited. Um, I, oh, I feel like I have work to do myself. I mean, I feel like everybody has some work to do here. And um, if you think mm -hmm. you don't, yeah. then you probably have the most work to do. <laughs> but, Including me, uh, I do have work to do. Well, you know, I mean, it, it's it's a it's just an interesting. It's t a time, it's a time I feel like a lot of stuff, even like, even with the earth is healing in the aspect of like, it's getting a break because we all have to slow down and stop using the freeways and the, you know, well, hopefully, I guess we're going to stop again. It's like, we have to expose these things to, to heal them. And there's not just, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. This is this is big and it's these are big things that need to be fixed. But then what we can mm -hmm. fix them could possibly be really great, right? So Absolutely. That's hopeful. There's hope. That should be a goal, right? It should be the goal. I mean that's what, what it's all about, right? Is growth and expansion. Yes. And mm -hmm better doing better and doing better than the next last generation and getting better and better and i thought we were on that path and politically for a while now i don't know but maybe it's okay because it's right. exposing everything and anyway i don't want to get into politics right now <laughs> but right. yes <laughs> I think we've made the point. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so, okay. So, oh, man. all back around to interior design, though, like, um, you are fabulous, and that's why I've followed you for so long. I love to know Thank you. what you're speaking from the mentor's perspective, uh, what you would give your mm -hmm. advice would be to someone who's just entering out of uh, design school and entering into the world of design, what would be your advice to your younger self? My advice uh, to my younger self, and I also share this with the, my mentees, um, be open to learning. Mm -hmm. Make your mistakes because you will make a mistake. You will make several mistakes. Celebrate your mistakes, but learn from them. Mm. That is the only way to get better and grow. Mm -hmm. Don't 
come out of school thinking you know everything because you absolutely do not. <laughs> Listen and learn. <laughs> So true. You know, don't be so hard on yourself. But, make those mistakes too. Right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Jeez. No. Yeah, you come out of school laugh at yourself. And you screw it up, which you will. Oh. You know, you just got the look. amount of mistakes I have made. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> well, make it make it on the the dime of the. <laughs> not wait until you know all that stuff before you open your firm. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know if that's a dumb thing to say because I felt like I've always, every job I was learning something, you know, it was like, wow, I can't believe how, how every job would show up with something new. And oh my gosh. I'm still making mistakes. I made one last week. <laughs> oh, that's what I know. <laughs> You know, but you know, you know that's, it's, you're it's, better, human. it's okay being a designer and making some mistakes. It's a different thing if you're a doctor and you make a mistake. <laughs> that, you know, oops, sorry, wrong arm. <laughs> true. Yeah, that that is true. <laughs> yeah, we're not so forgiving, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, this was um, really wonderful, oh. Marilyn. Thank you so much. You, I just, you're just such a treasure, and I'm so grateful to know you. Yeah. This was really oh, helpful. Welcome. I think this was really helpful. I, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You're very welcome. Yay. Totally enjoyed it. This is so much fun. 